hi guys welcome back to my channel it's your girl cc and we are back at it again today with another video in today's video we are going to be discussing 10 reasons why the bible isn't a well-written book now a lot of you guys might have different opinions on it and you know you're free to believe whatever you want to believe but um you know for me i have a few doubts about the bible you know how it's written by so many different authors and you know not knowing the background of these authors there's no problem with it being written by so many different people but you know not having you know the backgrounds details of who these people are is certainly a problem and you know it's been it being translated in so many different ways certainly 100 percent questions the reliability of the bible and you know if it's something that can guide us and if it's something that we should be following hmm it's very it's honestly very interesting to learn about but um yeah let's get straight into the video shall we if the bible were actually written by god it would look very different from the book so many christians revere you would think anything written by or inspired by the most powerful being in the universe would be equally as amazing but it's not the blogger Southern Skeptic did an excellent job of explaining why, you can see the link below, and he gave me permission to share and expand upon his ideas. So how do we know the Bible is not a well-written book? It's not well-organized. The Bible is a huge mess. I mean, it's written in chronological order, not thematic order. And that might be okay if the Bible were a history book, but not so much when it's a guidebook for life. And that's especially a huge problem when Christians use the Bible to justify their beliefs and actions. They have to flip through the book all over the place to find passages that support their views. You want passages about love, marriage, homosexuality, abortion? You won't find them in one spot. There's not even a helpful index. And this forces Christians to quote verses out of context all the time. There are no pictures. I know, not all books need pictures, but sometimes diagrams and charts can be very helpful. I mean, even Lord of the Rings came with a map. Where's the diagram of a family tree instead of a long list of begats? What about a timeline to help you keep track of what all the various characters are doing all the time? I'm just saying, it would be helpful. It's not very specific. When it comes to things you're not supposed to do, the list is scattered everywhere. A more helpful book would just include a checklist of things you're supposed to do and things you're not supposed to do. And maybe that list would include page numbers, just in case you want to go to the actual document for reference. And you know, maybe a sidebar to let you know when killing other people in the name of your faith is okay. Would be helpful. It's not easy to understand. We shouldn't need theologians and pastors to explain all of this material to us if God felt it was that important. It's not like they're doing a good job of it anyway, since all these different Christian pastors interpret the book in so many different ways. I mean, you show me a hundred Christians, I'll show you a hundred different Christianities. If all these people think God is saying very different things, that's partially his fault as a communicator. I mean, he should have been more explicit in terms of saying what he wants from us. It's not consistent. There are so many contradictions throughout the Bible and it's not like they're hard to spot. I mean, even Genesis 1 and 2 have difficulties reconciling with each other. And the Gospels have contradicting accounts of the details of Jesus' life. I remember J.K. Rowling made a mistake somewhere near the end of Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, and the fans picked up on it right away, and they called her out on it. And you know what she did? She apologized, she admitted it was a mistake, and she said she would correct it for later editions of the book. That's how you handle a mistake. But instead of fixing the Bible, where it's clearly wrong and clearly contradictory, people just keep replicating it. God doesn't need a copy machine. He needs an editor. It doesn't make any clear predictions. The Bible makes these vague prophecies, like the Messiah will come soon, or we're gonna have a war. But there are no specific predictions that you would need some sort of insider knowledge to figure out. 
There's a lot of reverse engineering going on to make sure that our modern realities retroactively fit what the Bible supposedly said. There are people who think the end of the world is coming soon because of biblical clues, and people who think Jesus is coming back to earth in their lifetime. They're never right, but they base their predictions on vague passages in the Bible. Maybe if the Bible predicted a natural disaster with, you know, dates and locations and the number of victims, then skeptics like myself would have to take that book a little more seriously. God has the same psychic abilities as Nostradamus. You can read into it whatever you want, but the prophecies are vague enough that they will eventually be fulfilled by someone if you're willing to look hard enough. That's just not impressive. It lacks knowledge that humans of the time could not have had. The Bible is only as scientifically accurate as the people of the time. Isn't that a coincidence? It says nothing about modern astronomy or mathematics or medicine. There are no passages about light bulbs or vaccines or the sun being a star with the earth revolving around it. And there's no mention of the United States. It's exactly the sort of book that you would expect people of that time to have written. In other words, it's just not that special. The characters make no sense. If you read really great books, the main characters are very complex. You know, the, the heroes often have flaws, and the bad guys sometimes have good intentions. In that sense, the Bible doesn't even bother with complex characters. God is always good no matter what. Even when he kills people with reckless abandon, it's for the greater good. Jesus is supposed to be without sin. And the redemption stories aren't really even that inspirational. Isaac, who did nothing wrong, is almost a victim of slaughter at the hands of his father. Job suffers and suffers for the crime of being faithful to God. It really makes you wonder who you should be rooting for. It's too repetitive. The Bible tells the same story multiple times, and it doesn't even bother to keep all those versions consistent with each other. A good writer tells the story once, properly, and then moves on. Or if you're like William Faulkner writing Absalom, Absalom, maybe you tell the same story from different perspectives and add more to each layer of the story. The Bible doesn't do that. Just look at the genealogy sections as an example. I mean, they are a chore to read. Surely you can explain lineage in a more interesting way than this person gave birth to that person, and that person gave birth to somebody else, and on and on for pages on end. It goes too far with the stories. If you wanted to convince people to take the Bible seriously, the stories would be a little more plausible. And yet there are so many miracles that deny any semblance of plausibility. Between talking snakes and virgin births and great floods and people almost living to the age of a thousand, it's a wonder anyone could take this book seriously. God should have backed off. Instead, he jumped the shark in the first chapter. The Bible isn't a good book. It sure as hell isn't a great book. It's cut-and-paste mythology thrown together by men thousands of years ago. All the action takes place in a very small speck of the world, all the action takes place in a tiny little speck of the world. If the Bible was a better written book, it'd be more convincing, too. As it stands, there's a reason a lot of people are leaving the church, and in part, that's because a lot of them realize that the Bible isn't worth taking all that seriously. As the saying goes, the Bible is just fan fiction based on an ancient game of telephone. My name is Hemant Mehta, and I write at FriendlyAtheist.com. Okay, so I hear his point about the Bible be being written in a chronological order. It kind of makes it seem as if it's a history book. Usually history books are written in chronological order, so that it makes more sense. But for me, I thought as if it being written in a chronological order makes a lot more sense to me because I can follow the stories and I can follow the events that happened throughout the time. So for me, it kind of makes sense for it to be written in a chronological order. And again, he is right, because if I want to back up my points on something i'm usually having to flip and flip through it to find the scripture or to find the verse that I'm, i am looking for so i kind of get it in a sense whereby you know it should be organized in a much better way however we have so many different types of bibles and for me i have the let me even show you it's right here actually 
I have the King James Bible, and you know, for me, it's highlighted. Let me show you guys. So for me, it's highlighted, so I can follow through. Cause on here, it has like um categories. For example, family, fake, prophecy, evil, sin, history, love, salvation, etc. Right. So I have those things here. So I kind of feel like it depends on the type of Bible that you get. Because with this one, I can easily flip through and find a verse that I am trying to look for. So yeah that's on that that's my opinion on that number two he mentioned that there's no pictures i kind of get why he will feel a certain type of way about the pictures like especially when it comes to the family like probably create like family tree but again it's not really needed so mm. and number three he said that it's just not very specific um i kind of get it but at the same time we have the same command commandment which is quite specific as to the things that we should and should not do however i get his point as to you know we should have a more lengthy and more discussed list as to you know what what is required of us but um yeah we have the same commandments at least <laughs> number four he mentioned that it is not easy to understand i get it because everyone has their different interpretations of the bible and that is true 110 percent. you know one pastor will say another thing another pastor will say the opposite so often we explain the verses that we read based on our interpretations rather than what is actually being written and it being translated in many different ways as well certainly affects that as well but um yeah i think his point is very true you know we do not need pastors to you know explain things to us it's just all uh, you know because at the end of the day everyone has their different opinions a pastor can explain something and i'll just be like okay but da -da 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 that you know at the end of the day we are always going to put our two pence into it and yeah number five he says that they are not consistent especially with the contradictions and stuff like i said uh, in another video i think um there are very much contradictions especially from the very beginning from the beginning of the bible there are contradictions for example um genesis chapter one is saying something genesis chapter 2 is saying another thing so of course those are contradictions and that is just not from the very beginning is throughout so his point is i, I kind of understand his point number six talking about you know prophecies and predictions um i kind of feel like okay that's understandable but at the same time it would be much better if we had like dates and locations as to where these um prophecies were going to happen these events were going to happen i feel like certainly that would have been very helpful uh, number seven no comments let's move on to number eight <laughs> number eight um you know i kind of feel like it's a bit mm, iffy because there are people who are there facing like it questions god's character you know why has why does god allow these bad things to happen to good people for example like he said job right job was you know praising god you know trying to worship him for trying to follow god's word and everything and yet he was going through so much calamities so then it's kind of like why you know why has why does god allow good th bad things to happen to good people so i kind of get that but at the same time it's god you can't question him and you know things like that so yeah number nine is he says it's too repetitive i get that especially with the gospels you know matthew mark luke and john basically said the same thing but in different ways and you know when i was reading the bible that is something that i did notice i was like okay you guys are just saying the same thing over and over again but in different ways and at times they sort of contradict contradict each other as well so yeah it is certainly too repetitive um yeah and finally number 10 no comment um i don't really have an opinion on that um i'm a bit shaky on it i don't really have like a standpoint but um yeah thank you all so much for tuning in today please take good care of yourselves don't forget to like comment share and do not forget to subscribe thank you all and i'll see you guys in the next video bye